<clears throat> so hello, uh, I'm Roberto Guzman. I'm going to I'm from Robotnik. I'm going to present uh, real-world indoor and outdoor navigation experiences resource. This is the work uh, developed by my colleague Roman Navarro and, and me. And uh, so this is presentation is about uh, navigation outdoor. We have done with uh, our Summit Excel robot uh, to follow some white points uh, using uh, DGPS. A satellite based augmented system and inertial measurement units in, in ROS. Uh, the objective of this part is to test the low cost hardware performance for outdoor localization and navigation. And then the second part of my presentation is related with uh, navigation indoor, where we have used our AGBS uh, robot. And the experiment is related with indoor mapping and localization. And the objective is to analyze the applicability of G mapping and AMCL for indoor logistic uh, transport. So for outdoor navigation, we first have uh, done some simulation. We have used the Hector Gazebo plugins for uh, using an outdoor environment and for using the GPS plugin that uh, publishes Navsat fixed uh, messages type. Then uh, this is of, from the, the stack developed by the Technical University of Darmstadt. Then we use this uh, GPS common package uh, in the UTM odometry node to transform these uh, GPS messages into uh, Cartesian coordinates, in fact, to translate from geodetic coordinates to Cartesian coordinates. Uh, then we have used the extended Kalman filter, of course, for fashion of GPS, inertial measurement unit, and odometry. And finally, we have developed two packages, one for sending a sequence of, of goals uh, so to, to define a path, and one for configuring our uh, parameters for the move base uh, stack. So this is how the robot pose extended camera filter works. It has three inputs. The first, the odometry, then the inertial measurement unit data, and third is usually the visual odometry used. In this case, we have uh, used as input the conversion of the uh, GPS data. So uh, this filter is designed to, file, to, to filter only relative location estimation, so it will provide an odometry estimation finally. This is, even if you are using a GPS, this is not providing a localization, this is just an uh, increment of the accuracy of the odometry estimation. So it, depending on the, on the uh, standard deviation you define for the GPS, uh, you will get an odometry estimation which will match more the, the odometry or match more the GPS, but in fact this is only odometry, right? So if in these two examples that we have here, the uh, standard deviation, if you tune it to 0 0.3 uh, meter, uh, you, you will get some result. And uh, if you use the real uh, standard deviation of uh, odometry, which is in millimeter, compared with the standard deviation of the, of the G GPS, which is in meter, then the extended Kalman filter will follow finally the odometry. Right? This is the sensor set we have used. This is GPS by uh, MediaTek, Ublox, LIA 6H, and Novatel. The first two devices are low-cost devices ranging in the 50 to 100 uh, euro price and are designed uh, to operate in a satellite-based augmented system. Uh, this gives an overall uh, accuracy RMS value of 0 0.5 meter accuracy. So this is designed for precise point positioning in slow uh, moving application. And then we have used also the internal gyro that uh, our, our robot uh, already implements. You can see here our uh, path on, uh, projected on, on Google Maps. And uh, this shows that uh, even using this device and having this uh, um, accuracy of 0 0.5 meter, you have a high repeatability which allows to, to get uh, a, a continuous path that you can, you can follow. So the two devices, uh, low-cost low devices, are able to give you a, an estimation every, uh, at, at 5 hertz. Right. Finally, an uh, additional sensor we have used is uh, Ardu IMU, and we use this sensor to estimate the orientation, the heading of the robot. Uh, this sensor has to be calibrated, uh, what you do is you, you, you put it on the robot, you do some uh, 360 degrees uh, motion, uh, turning rotation, 
and then you plot the values and you get a type of ellipse. And what you have to do to correct this value in two dimensional is to fit an ellipse and to get the center of the ellipse and adjust the uh, x and y parameter. And if you are working in 3D, what you have to you have to fix an ellipsoid. On the on the right, uh, oh, sorry, on your right image, uh, there is a comparison of the internal gyro during a pure rotation motion with the heading that you get from the from the magnetometer. So what we have until here was uh, uh, transformed from Odom to the base footprint of the robot that was provided by the Kalman filter. We need an additional uh, node that is able to publish uh, from map to Odom in the same way as it is done in the gmapping algorithm or AMCL algorithm. So with this uh, node, you can play with uh, your uh, frequency, how, how fast are you updating the, the transform the GPS is providing. Uh, you can also filter this uh, GPS information. And uh, yeah, you can also play with the uh, MOVE-based parameters you are using. Of course, if you are, you, you are having 0.5 RMS accuracy, then uh, the uh, move base should be adjusted in, in a way that the XY goal tolerance allows to find finally the the waypoint and go to the, to the next one. That's there. So if you don't uh, adjust these uh, move phase uh, parameters, or you use a higher frequency with uh, with uh, SBAs, SBAS uh, localization, you will get some sinuous uh, motion like the one you you see there on the on the right uh, picture. So this is the example of following some uh, simple waypoints. So the conclusion is that it's uh, very easy to implement in ROS. You can uh, use all the, the packages already available, like the GPSD client, the MoveBase, and all the, the packages, the uh, robot post extended kernel filter we have used. It's able to follow a path using a low cost uh, device and in also a low cost inertial measurement unit. And uh, it has been tested in a full sky, full sky view in, with uh, satellite based augmented system conditions. It's a nice configuration to start working in outdoor navigation. And we didn't test the long-term accuracy, but the, the result seems to be enough for some applications outdoor in uh, agriculture, lawn mowers, and maybe in some uh, military uh, field applications. Even the, one of the two devices I have presented is able to localize in Galileo. So you, have, you only need to, to, to set a firmware up, upgrade and then you can get under meter accuracy. So this is my first part of the presentation. Second part is related with uh, indoor navigation. Uh, there we have an experiment done in a uh, hospital. Uh, this is a robot that is intended to transport several uh, goods inside uh, a hospital. In fact, it is uh, replacing this uh, woman uh, that uh, usually does about uh, 20 kilometers per day transporting the trolley, but uh, new hospitals are already built in order to support a robot solution for the indoor uh, logistic transport. So the robot we have used is this one. This is uh, a AGBS robot, has this size and weight. It can handle trolleys up to 500 kilo and has a speed up to 1.25. In, in fact, it can go faster, but it's uh, working in a human environment, so this is the current limit of speed. And the sensor set is uh, two SIG uh, S3000 uh, laser scanner, then a high accuracy odometry, and then we use a ground truth to provide the localization indoor, which is based on magnetic landmark. So why, the reason why we are doing this uh, test is to analyze the possibility of using SLAM or a combined solution of SLAM and uh, indoor landmark-based localization for, for, for the transport. 
So the advantages of the traditional landmark-based localization are that it's very robust, it's very accurate, you can get up to millimeter positioning, and uh, it's very fast. You can work in, at speeds up to three meters per second and it's uh, reliable. Uh, disadvantages are that you have to have um, fixed uh, landmarks on the, on the environment, and uh, this is uh, this is not so flexible as just changing the goal in a, in a map. And also, it has some installation cost that you, that you have when you do a new installation. So we, con we consider 2D SLAM. Why? Uh, the, because we have already in the robot uh, two lasers already used for safety, and because it's, it will be more flexible. And the disadvantages are for sure uh, reliability and probably accuracy, because uh, the laser accuracy is, uh, from the beginning, the measurement is, uh, is some centimeters, so you are not reaching the millimeter accuracy you will have with, with Landmark, but uh, maybe enough. And speed that we still don't know if we can operate at the same speeds with uh, that type of localization or not. This is the uh, map we have created of the environment. It is a structured but changing environment. Uh, with people passing by, with trolleys, also other, other robots uh, moving in the area, uh, boxes, that, so it's uh, really dynamic. It's characterized by long corridors where you, you get a typical AMCL uncertainty uh, point cloud that looks like an ellipse, and very, very long ellipse. And uh, it has several floors, each one with a different map. So the packages we have used are G-mapping, AMCL, and one driver for the laser, the S3000 laser. And what we have done is we have created a two-dimensional map of the navigation area. We have estimated the pose using AMCL, and then we have compared the AMCL pose with the odometry and with the ground truth we, we get with our uh, localization system. This is the map created. The road length is about 200 meters. And uh, the most uh, difficult thing has been uh, to adjust the orientation of the, of the map with the, with the real world orientation. So this is a video showing the, the top part is showing the AMCL uh, particles distribution during the, tra the, the task. Uh, of course, this is much more faster than the robot was, was working. And you see that uh, uh, you, we, we are not uh, losing the, the localization in any part of the, of the uh, trajectory. So the conclusions are so it, it seems to be reliable uh, in this environment. Uh, we didn't have a single loss, in our, but we only test in not crowded conditions. It has repeatability in act. Uh, even if you see these uh, curves there, uh, the, the first one, the top one, here the CN. Yeah, that one is the real uh, ground truth. Uh, location. The second one is the odometry. And the third one are uh, re repetitions of AMCL using different sources of odometry, either the ground truth or either the round odometry. So you get a high repetibility of the, of the location estimation. So the problem is that uh, due to the map is uh, not correctly uh, matching the, the, the real world, uh, the location, the final location, is, uh, has some drift from the real world uh, ground truth position. So the difficulty, the most important difficulty we have got is to, to get an accurate map. So, and this ends my presentation. If you have some questions.